This is episode five in the Consciousness Series. My name is Candace Sanderson, and I want to welcome you. Today, we're discussing life lessons, and the best way to do that is to share what I've learned since September 28, 2022, the day that Hurricane Ian made landfall where I live here in Florida. From my balcony in Naples, Florida, I can see both Sanibel Island and Fort Myers Beach, or maybe I should say what's left of them. Fort Myers Beach was decimated by Hurricane Ian. And the causeway connecting Sanibel Island to the mainland was washed away in several places. I have lived in Naples for almost 30 years, and this is the first time that a storm surge had actually breached the seawall that's along the seacoast. The surge flooded my building. The Gulf of Mexico burst through the doors of my building. It crumbled walls. It picked up parked cars and tossed them back and forth across a river that moments before had been the street where I lived, Gulf Shore Boulevard. It was now a river. And those vehicles looked like matchbox cars in a child's watery sandbox. At the time of this recording, which is less than two weeks after the storm hit, we still have cars perched on top of what had been tall, healthy hedges that lined the sidewalk in front of my condominium building. Because the storm's path was predicted to be closer to Tampa, then here in Southwest Florida, we did not get the typical evacuation notices. I didn't hear about any emergency shelters that were open. You know, in the past, there were shelters designed to help people weather the storm, those that had to evacuate and had no place to live. There was none of that. The only areas that were under mandatory evacuation were those coastal areas when, the, when Hurricane Ian hit. The day before the storm, I moved a half a mile inland to join my daughter, her husband, and my two beautiful granddaughters, Shalane, age six, and Lorelai, age 10. Except for a leaky roof and almost five days without electricity, we survived with just a few bumps and bruises that occurred when there's no lights at night. I still have a little bit of a black eye, but I'm not complaining. I'm still living at my daughter's house, but during trips to my condo to get some, you know, necessary things, I've realized that I've really lost a lot during the storm, but I lost things, not people. When I look around, there are people that have lost everything, including loved ones. That's when I begin to count my blessings. Things can be replaced not people. Just a couple of days ago, I was a guest on Rob and Trish McGregor's podcast, The Mystical Underground. It was the first, air quotes, normal activity I've done since Hurricane Ian hit. The McGregors also live in Florida, but they're on the East Coast, so they were away from that direct impact, that direct path of Ian. During the interview, they asked a question that I had to really think about before answering. They wanted to know if my guides and angels had given me a heads up about the storm. I couldn't say that I had any sort of strong notice, but I did feel nudges from them and nudges that I followed. I did live in a mandatory evacuation area, so I listened to that common sense advice and I followed it. But I have not always done that. So why did I do it this time, especially when we thought the storm would hit over 100 miles north of us? Was it guidance from my angels? Maybe. But what I do know, and I can tell you with authority, that my angels and guides are with me now. And they have been with me throughout the storm and its aftermath. I have no doubt about that. Let me share a couple examples. It started with a caterpillar, that little creature that 
transforms into a chrysalis and then into a beautiful butterfly. I had raised a monarch caterpillar in a netted cage and Stripe, that was the name that uh, Shalane gave him, had transformed into a chrysalis a few days before the storm. When I moved to my daughter's house, I moved Stripe from the balcony to inside my apartment. I closed all of my electrical shutters and left. Two days after the storm, the roads were clear enough for my daughter and son-in-law and me to go to my condo to assess the damage. When we entered my apartment, of course it was completely dark. No electricity and those electric shutters were down. There was no way to get them up. Using my phone's flashlight, I looked into the habitat. He was not supposed to have hatched until several days later, but instead when I looked, this chrysalis had transformed into a beautiful monarch butterfly fluttering about the cage. I had no choice. I changed his name from Stripe to Ian. This was my first message of hope from my guides. Butterfly Ian represents a new life and a life that had developed from that formless chrysalis, from that chaos came a new beginning. Just like the chaos of the storm, we too will rise from this unknown, from this chaos, and we will embrace a new beginning. This was part of the lessons I was learning, hope. There is always hope. For almost five days, we had no electricity at my daughter's house, so we had to find a new balance a new flow, a new rhythm. We were no longer in control. We had to let nature show us the way. So we went to bed when the sun set. We rose when the sun woke us. With no AC in the stifling South Florida heat, we opened the windows. And it was so sweet to wake by hearing the birds begin to chirp when the sun rose. Those birds also helped drown out those nearby generators for all those neighbors who had the foresight to buy them. I think I may have just thought of the perfect gift for Christmas for my daughter and her family, a generator. We were learning to slip into a flow that was designed by nature herself. We're no longer living by clock time. We're no longer fighting against the tide. We learned to just take a deep breath and to go with the flow. When the electricity went out, my phone was the only one at my daughter's house with cell service, and even that was very sporadic. We had no way of charging it except to go into the car. But one morning, I did check my email, and I had an email from Buzzsprout telling me that the latest episode from the Reluctant Messenger podcast had been released. When I scheduled these, I scheduled them a month in advance, and I don't remember what schedule, but the name of the episode, here was one of my signs that I just loved, Angels Watching Over You. It was a wonderful sign from my angels. It made me cry. I needed to go to my apartment so I could get some of my belongings, and I got in the car, put on my seatbelt, but before I cranked the engine, I just said a little prayer and I asked for another sign that my angels were around. Of course I knew they were, but I love getting those signs. To drive to my condo from my daughter's house is only seven minutes. So during that short drive, I saw a van pull onto the road in front of me from a side street. And as it did, I saw the side of the van it was from Charlie's Angel Plumbing Company here in Naples. I thought, that's great. There's my sign. But then once I got closer, the back of the van had a motto, and it says, nothing stops an angel. Once again, tears flooded my eyes. Although I, I really cannot say with certainty that my angels had really forewarned me about this catastrophic event. 
you know, maybe I needed to be part of this. That's part of the lessons I need from growth. But I could not question that they were with me. They are always with us and they're helping us navigate this aftermath in this disaster. Knowing that our angels and guides are here helping us through these trials and tribulations, that just gives me such great solace. I'm getting other messages too, and I'm sure that I will for months to come, <laughs> messages just about Hurricane Ian. I'm learning about resilience, fortitude, compassion, gratitude. I'm learning to live and thrive beyond new barriers, just like Butterfly Ian did. So many of us in Southwest Florida are wading through the day, just looking for a spark of light as we witness the destruction that surrounds us because of this catastrophe. The messengers have told me to find a few minutes each day to close my eyes and to give thanks for what we do have. Again, things don't matter, people do. We begin to realize that this too shall pass. When we sit in silence, we slip outside the worries that surround us. We begin to see the bigger picture, a picture of unity where everything is connected. For years, the messengers have been telling me about Gaia, the spirit of Mother Earth, and how she is going through a transition to higher vibrational frequencies. Everything is shifting, and it's easy to find yourself off kilter, out of balance. This gives us a chance to start anew, to reassess what defines us. Just as the pandemic was a reset for many of us, so is Hurricane Ian, as well as other catastrophic events like earthquakes and personal tragedies around the globe. These events give us an opportunity to look at what's important. It gives us a chance to grow. We can't take things with us when we transition from this planet. So maybe we have a chance right now to look at what we tether ourselves to in our daily lives. What helps us lead a more fulfilling life? Is it these things like our phones and our computers? Maybe it's time to let some of those things go. How we live our lives can and does help with the overall consciousness of the planet. We are all connected, but many of us do not see that. Once we realize that through line of unity and we begin seeing other humans as our sisters and brothers, we will realize life is not a contest. It is not a battle. It is not us versus them. Regardless of the color of someone's skin, of the language that they speak, what gender they identify with, their cultural or religious beliefs, we have much more in common than differences. Across the globe, we are united. We are humanity. And once we begin to see that and we begin to treat others as we would like to be treated, then we're affecting change on this beautiful planet of ours. It's not always easy to take the higher road. Believe me, after just experiencing this hurricane, I understand how challenging it can be to keep hope in our lives. But we have a team of guidance out there that can help us, our angels, our guides. And yes, that might even include ETs. Isn't it time to take a deep breath and listen to them? For me, Hurricane Ian, like the pandemic, offers a reset, a chance to grow and reassess what's important. I lost many things, but that's not important. People are. So it's learning to find a new footing, a new balance. It's learning to let go of what does not serve us. 
Why worry about things you cannot change? That only drains your personal energy. Prioritize. Become resilient. Protect your energy space by not expending it where it's not needed. Reassess life. Smile more. Care more. Be compassionate. Maybe it's time to start down a new path. Have a new goal. Realize that there's not much that separates us from others. Remember some of the things that we've discussed in the previous episodes. Know that you are more than your physical body. Your true self, your spirit, your soul is non-physical. So step outside the aches and pains of physicality and spend a few sacred moments in peace in quiet, in silence each day. That's where we connect with divine guidance from our angels. So take some time each day to sit in silence, even if it's just for a few seconds. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath, breathing in through your heart, like we talked about in the previous episodes. Let that heart energy cleanse your energy body. Smile. Bring in gratitude. As you take those first steps in your new life, know that you are not alone. We have a team of angels and guides who are watching over us and they're ready to help. Ask and then listen for an answer. It might be a song on the radio, an unexpected thought, a phone call from someone, or even a motto on a van. Protect your space by building that reball, that bubble of energy around you. It not only keeps negative or low-lying energy away, it keeps your personal energy intact. Wake each morning with a smile. You may not feel it, but do it anyway. That will help jumpstart your day on a positive note. End your day the same way with a smile. That's how we change the world. It's one person at a time. It's one smile at a time. So until next time, remember the importance of being kind. Smile, share words of support, and don't forget to breathe. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>